My name is James Elmer and I'm one of the Boss Canada directors. Boss Canada is uh, the Borneo Orangutan Society and we are based here in Toronto uh, and we are an independently run, not-for-profit not for, for organization working towards conservation of the great ape, the orangutan. Uh, <coughs> Boss Canada runs under the umbrella of the Boss Foundation based in Indonesia and our projects include education, research, and rehabilitation in the field. We exist solely on the efforts of our core volunteer group, and as such, much of our donations and monies we receive go directly towards conservation in the field. Uh, we also thank you for any support that you can give to them. At the end of tonight's talk, we will hold uh, door prizes. We have some of Anne's books that we will have her sign and uh, raffle off. Uh, we will also have a raffle. We uh, will give you an opportunity to uh, have another look at our uh, auction table and uh, then do a raffle. Uh, at the, also at the end of tonight's talk, we'll have a brief question and answer period. So I would ask uh, that you please uh, keep your questions until the very end. We'll have an opportunity to ask any of them uh, to Anne directly. Uh, I'd like to take a second to thank our event sponsors, uh, who without, uh, we obviously would not be able to put on such an event. Um, I'd like to thank Now Magazine, Cuso, the Toronto Zoo, Zoo Check, and our own boss volunteers, uh, as well as the local businesses who have supported us tonight with our silent auction items. Um, I'd like to take a second to ask you please to turn off your cell phones and personal PDAs before we get started here. Uh, let's, let's talk a little bit now about Anne. I'm going to give you a bit of a bio. I certainly hope that you'll be able to understand her tonight. After spending 20 years in the forest of, uh, of Indonesia, she now speaks fluent to right now. <laughs> Dr. Rassan is a professor of psychology at Glendon uh, York University in Toronto. Since 1989, she has been studying intelligence and learning in ex-captive Bornean orangutans rehabilitated and released to free forest life. Her studies have been affiliated with orangutan projects in Tanjang Pudding National Park, Central Indonesian Borneo, and orangutan reintroduction projects in East and Central Indonesian Borneo. She has published numerous research and popular articles on orangutan intelligence and popular books on great ape intelligence. Dr. Rasan has contributed to several documentaries on orangutans as scientific advisor and participant and serves on advisory boards for several orangutan support organizations, Alchemy Films, Borneo Orangutan Survival Foundation Indonesia, Borneo Orangutan Society USA, and Orangutan Network. And she is also the executive, executive director of the Borneo Orangutan Society Canada. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Dr. Anne Rasson. everybody for coming. It's, it's fabulous to see an awful lot of old friends that I haven't seen for a long time. And it's equally wonderful to see a lot of people that I don't know. So I really appreciate everybody coming out tonight. Um, I get to talk about my favorite people. So this is good fun, except of course I'm nervous. Um, right. Well, uh, as you just heard, I think, can I turn this off? Um, first of all, I think I want to put my own thanks in as well. I particularly want to thank the Boss Canada team. I think they're just a fabulous bunch of people and I'm really proud to be able to work with all of you, both outside this event and putting this together. So thanks to everybody for your input here. Also, I'm mostly going to be talking about the research I've been involved with for the last 20 years in Indonesia. 
and I really want to emphasize it's not just me. I'm out there, but I'm also working with a lot of students. I have a team of Indonesian research assistants, and there are people at the projects that I work with that also help out enormously. And I wouldn't know half of what I know about the orangutans if it weren't for all of these other people who've contributed their insights, their time, and their energies. Uh, so very much thanks to all of them. And certainly, I also have to thank the orangutans. You know, when you're working with them in the forest, you can study them if they let you do it. If they don't want to be seen, they disappear on you. So it's, a, in fact, a great honor that they don't mind having us around so that we can actually take part in their lives and see what they're doing. So they're also a big part of uh, the fact that I can do anything at all. Uh, and I just thought I'd show you a little bit. That's my research team, or one of my Indonesian research teams in the corner, just to let you know who they are and what we do. Okay, it was actually almost exactly 20 years ago that I headed off to Borneo for the first time to look into the possibility of studying orangutan intelligence uh, in the field. Um, I went knowing about as little as anybody knows when you go to the other side of the world. I didn't know much about Borneo. I assumed that I was going to find leeches as big as the Loch Ness Monster coming out from behind every tree, and there were crocodiles, and I probably would last three months and die some miserable tropical disease. Um, in fact, that didn't happen at all. I'm still standing. I have most of my body parts intact. Uh, and Barney at Borneo turns out to be a pretty benign place compared to what we tend to think about it. Um, I'll just show you where it was. I didn't even know it was when I went down there. I knew it was some place down in the south in the Pacific. I thought it was a little place. I was dumb. This is, of course, a Google Earth photograph. Uh, and what you have down here is Southeast Asia. So there is uh, Thailand and Malaysia here, Australia down here. And this circle is the Indonesian archipelago. In Borneo, as you look at it, actually sits in about the middle. Uh, and uh, Borneo is governed about 80% by uh, Indonesia. It, the part of Borneo that's governed by Indonesia is called Kalimantan. The other part is governed mainly by uh, Malaysia in two states, Sabah and Sarawak. And then there's the tiny little sultanate of Brunei in the middle. I've always worked in the Indonesian part. A little bit about orangutans. Now, of course, I went to uh, consider studying intelligence. And I picked orangutans on purpose because they're one of the great apes, and they are exceptionally intelligent. And I really like species that outsmart humans. And my experience with chimpanzees was that even a one-year-old could outsmart them. So I thought it would be fun to go and see some other great apes and see some older ones and just see how bad it could really get when you were playing the game on their turf. So I headed off to Borneo to look at orangutans. Uh, you should know that they're one of only four non-human great apes that survive in the world today. The other, this is the orangutan here. This is an adult female with a, with a baby. This is one of the gorillas. These are mountain gorillas. Over here is a common chimpanzee or a normal chimpanzee, the kind that Jane Goodall would study. And up here is a bonobo or a pygmy chimpanzee. Uh, orangutans stand out also because they're the only Asian great ape. All the others live in Africa. And you can see also they're the only redheads. All the other great apes are black. Orangutans are also known as the largest tree-living tree mammal in the world. An adult male can weigh as much as 120 kilograms, and if you've ever tried climbing a tree yourself, you'll know how hard that is. Imagine what it's like at double your weight. They are semi-solitary. Most primates are social species. You see them in groups. You don't see orangutans in groups. Uh, really, the only permanent grouping structure that's recognized in orangutans is a mother with an infant. Sometimes you see mating pairs that are consorting for a few weeks, and sometimes you see youngsters that hang out with each other. But other than that, they're basically solitary. They have extremely long, slow lives. They live up to 55 years in the woods, and they'll live as long as 60 in zoos. That's about as long as any of the other great apes, certainly longer than gorillas. They have extremely slow reproduction. They have only one offspring at a time, and only once every seven or eight or even nine years. So a female in her life may have as only as many as four or five youngsters. They live today only in the islands of Borneo and Sumatra. Uh, ancestors lived all the way up into southern China and through the mainland, but now they're restricted to those two islands. It's all tropical rainforest habitat that they use, and they mostly like lowland and swamp forest uh, along rivers, and they're primarily fruit eaters. All of that goes together in a package, uh, but I won't go into that in much detail. The only thing I'd like to mention is that if you think about it, there are these great hulking guys that live in the trees that are trying to make it on fruit. As you can imagine, if you've ever tried to be on a fruit diet, they are hungry all the time. And you've never seen anything as obsessed as